On a chilling autumn evening in 1589, a crowd gathered in the town square of Bedburg, a city located in the district of Cologne, Germany. All eyes were fixed on a wealthy landowner named Peter Stump, who was about to face a horrific execution. Stump was accused of making a pact with the devil, transforming into a werewolf, and committing several murders, slaughter of defenseless children, and pregnant women whose brains he devoured. Welcome back, everyone. This is Kronos, and in today's episode, we're going to review one of those stories that are not necessarily what they seem, and that show us that the motives that move people are not always visible at a first glance. Join me to learn about the story of the werewolf of Bedburg. After being subjected to the torture of the rack to get him to confess, he was punished in accordance with the charges of cannibalism, murder, and pacting with the devil. Firstly, his skin was removed with hot pincers. Then, he was tied to a wheel and his bones were broken with the blunt side of an axe to prevent him from coming back to life and seeking revenge. Finally, he was beheaded and his body was thrown into the flames. His head was then displayed on a pole in the center of the town, next to a figure resembling a wolf, symbolizing the monstrous creature he claimed to turn into. The crowds that gathered to witness the event were left horrified and shaken by the gruesome spectacle. During his trial, Stump confessed to practicing dark magic from a young age, which helped him amass great wealth. He claimed to have made a pact with the devil, who gave him a magic belt that allowed him to transform into a beastly creature with fiery eyes, sharp teeth, and a strong, powerful body like that of a wolf. Stump admitted to committing all the murders he was accused of, including those of 14 innocent children and two pregnant women whose fetuses and hearts he had eaten. He also confessed to having engaged in incestuous relations with his daughter and having had sexual intercourse with a succubus, a female demon that the devil sent him on several occasions. Even his own son was not spared, and his brain was allegedly eaten. The trial and execution of Stump became a major news event across Europe. Numerous flyers were spread in English, Dutch, and Danish, telling the true and astonishing story of a peasant who transformed into a wolf through magic for seven hours every day. They explained how Stump used a magical belt that transformed him into a terrible wolf. Other sources from that time such as the diary of Cologne councilman Hermann von Weisenberg, 1518-1597, provided detailed accounts of the case. Peter Stump is just one of the many cases of werewolves that have been part of the European popular imagination for centuries. The fascination and terror that surround these beings who transform into wolves at night to devour livestock, people, or corpses reflects the fear and insecurity of societies that lived in constant danger for ages. In the land of Cologne, a series of tragic events occurred prior to Stump's trial. Children who watched over livestock were brutally attacked and killed, and the attacks were attributed to the wild beasts that inhabited the dense forests of Germany, especially wolves. There were also cases of farmers who had been devoured by animals while working in the forests. These attacks fueled the resurrection of a, the ancient myth of a monster that was part human and part animal, lurking in the shadows of the forest. Resentment and Revenge During times of risk, European societies often feared and imagined beasts of legend that roamed the dark forests. Peter Stump, a wealthy peasant in a time of scarcity and famine, became one such beast, 
and an object of envy and suspicion. He was accused of transforming into a wolf at night and terrorizing the local community, resulting in his execution. Witnesses claimed the wolfman limped on his left front paw, which they attributed to Stump losing his left hand while chopping wood. Interestingly, Stump's name means Stump in German, which was also a nickname for Abel Riswold, his real name. In addition to Stump, two other people were executed. Katerina Trumpen, a neighboring peasant, and her daughter Sibylla. Katerina's case was similar to that of Stump's, as she was a wealthy widow compared to the others that lived in the area. Accusing her of involvement would prevent her from gaining further power and influence. The guilty verdict also allowed the local lord to seize their lands and dispose of them as he saw fit. Stump's condemnation and execution also had a political and religious motive behind it. In the year 1577, a man named Gebhard Truchis von Waldberg became the Archbishop of Cologne. He declared his conversion to Lutheranism, marrying a young Protestant noblewoman and trying to authorize the practice of his new religion in his archbishopric. Catholic authorities quickly reacted to this, and in 1584, Truchis was replaced by a new Catholic archbishop, Ernest of Bavaria. This caused a conflict known as the War of Cologne from 1583 to 1589, which deeply affected the city of Bedburg, just as the stump case erupted. The soldiers who invaded the Bedburg region behaved like bandits, attacking towns, villages, and roads, and ruthlessly killing shepherds to seize their flocks, causing great distress to the local population. In 1589, a new lord came to Bedburg. His name was Werner von Salmreifscheid Dick, and he was a Catholic. Most of the population in the area were Protestant and resisted his rule. To show his power and authority, and also send a clear message to the Protestants, he decided to use Stump as an example. Stump, who had converted to Protestantism with Neunar, was chosen as a scapegoat and executed. In summary, Stump's execution was used as a measure of intimidation for the Protestant population in those territories. It wasn't about a werewolf. It seems that it all came down to a religious power struggle. And that's the story of the werewolf of Bedburg. Envy, revenge, and power is what it came down to. I hope you enjoyed the episode and please give us a thumbs up if you did. We'll see you in the next one, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.